It was a daring heist. There was shock, dismay, nothing like that had ever happened. An unsolved mystery for 32 years. This is the cultural patrimony of, of America. Um, Willem de Kooning rocked the art world. Until a widow died in southwest New Mexico. It really caused quite a stir <laughs> around here. What was found behind her bedroom door answered one question. 32 years ago, this, this painting was valued at $400,000. Now we're talking $150 million. And sparked another. When the phone rang, who was on the other end? An agent from the FBI was at the other end. Who were Jerry and Rita Alter? That wasn't the aunt and uncle I knew. Did they steal a painting for their own viewing pleasure? For the first time, new clues about the late couple, their home movies, world travels, and clues that we discovered in their home. This seems like an open and shut case, is it not? Nothing's ever open and shut. Discovering the de Kooning, a masterpiece mystery, and a WFAA original. When you want to get off the grid, few places may be more ideal than the town on top of a mesa. Less than 300 people call Cliff, New Mexico home, and almost all of them are talking about their former neighbors, Jerry and Rita Alter. Well, they were very reserved type people. They kind of stayed to themselves. That's what fuels this mystery even more. Well, it was hard to believe at first. I had a hard time with that, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a sure mystery. Jerry died in 2012. Rita passed away in June 2017. It's what was found behind their bedroom door that people just can't believe. You know, I was just cleaning up details and then this changed the whole thing. Ron Roseman was executor of their estate, Rita's nephew, and a Texan. When the phone rang, who was on the other end? An agent from the FBI was at the other end. What did they say? That they um, were inquiring about a painting that was found in my aunt's house. They gave me the details, the general details. The, there was a painting there that was stolen from the University of Arizona Art Library. 30 some odd years ago. That's the painting in the gold frame, barely visible there, just behind the door. Still, the bigger bombshell is what the FBI said next. Did they say how much it was worth? My understanding that it's uh, appraised at $160 million. A $160 million masterpiece in a cheap gold frame hung out of sight behind Aunt Rita's bedroom door. It's called Woman Ochre. Willem de Kooning painted it in the 1950s, among the finest examples of abstract expressionism. But were Uncle Jerry and Aunt Rita art thieves? You don't think they had anything to do with it? I can't imagine that they would. That wasn't the aunt and uncle I knew. Still, circumstantial evidence would soon mount against the couple. But the break in this cold case, that came from a customer at a consignment shop. You know, this is a furniture store, and I know it's consignment, and I know and the last thing I ever expected to see was that. James Cutera recognized Woman Ochre at Manzanita Ridge Furniture and Antiques, just down the road in Silver City, New Mexico. Yeah, the painting was right there, and it looked pretty much exactly like ones that I'd seen in museums, like in San Francisco. And this was actually one of the paintings, one of the two paintings in the house that we liked. When Ron liquidated his aunt's estate, this place, bought most of her furniture and art, never realizing what they inadvertently acquired. James actually kneeled down in front of the painting and was trying to scratch at it. And I grabbed him by his wrist and he said, do you know what you have here? At the time, did you know who de Kooning was? I, yes, I did, but the nature of our business, we get a lot of these studies, we get a lot of uh, prints. Um, never in my right mind would I have assumed it was a real de Kooning. I thought it was a study. A study being a, a duplicate. Uh, I, uh, somebody uh, just said, I'm going to paint like a cocooning. And James wasn't the only customer to zero in on it. By the time the third person had come in and, and they were touching it and looking at it and wanting to see it closer, um, we were afraid that somebody would, you know, 
bash it or flick paint off of it or something. So uh, that's when we decided that we would pick it up and stick it somewhere safe. And the only door that we had in the store that locked was the bathroom door. So we kind of slipped it in next to the toilet and <laughs> locked the door and... When they Googled de Kooning, this news article was among the first to come up. And there it was, a story from 2015, 30 years after the theft, saying that famous oil painting was stolen from the University of Arizona and had never been seen since. Got my composure and I called them and I got a, a student receptionist and I said to her, um, I think I have a piece of art that was stolen from you guys. And she said, what piece? And I said, the de Kooning. And she said, hold please. It sounds corny, but I had daydreams of getting that phone call of somebody calling up or somebody mysteriously sending a package and the painting being inside of it, you know. I don't think I honestly thought it would actually happen. Um, I remember her saying, uh, after I'd, she had asked me a couple of questions and I said, something like, what do you think? And she said, I'm, I'm hopefully optimistic. I mean, obviously it was hard not to get excited, um, but at the same time, I, I wanted to be realistic. Uh, yeah, I said, tell me more. And he said uh, that he bought some items at an estate sale and he was going through them and he did some research and he found an article from 2015 and he says, it looks just like the painting I have. And then she asked for some specific pictures, um, a picture, uh, she wanted to see some of the, um, brush strokes and the textures. The thing he said that really stood out, that really made me stop, um, was he said there are lines across it, the paint is cracked as if it's been rolled up. And I said, okay, that's, that's just a detail that nobody, I mean, nobody could just say that. You can see those horizontal lines there, the cracks in the painted canvas. In this image, that David emailed Olivia Miller, the curator, it just all matched up perfectly. And then they gave me the dimensions and that was it. I mean, it was, it was an inch off, which absolutely corresponded to it being cut out and then being reframed and rewrapped around stretcher bars. The theft happened the day after Thanksgiving in 1985. A security guard agreed to let a man and a woman come in the museum just before it opened. The woman distracted the guard right here at the base of the stairs. The man goes upstairs, uses a blade to cut out that painting, and they both take off in a hurry. At the time, back in 1985, though, there were no cameras in here and no clues about what happened, except for a rust-colored two-door car speeding away outside. Searching through several hours of film, we found it. In Jerry and Rita's home movies, seen here for the first time, the couple's dark red two-door car. Mr. and Mrs. Alter had a red two-door car. Yes. What do you think about that as a potential clue? Everything's always a clue. Brian Seastone is the chief of the University of Arizona Police Department. And in 1985, he was the young officer dispatched to the scene of the museum. If you look at art across the country, the world that's been stolen, there's a couple of reasons it's found. And that's either somebody dies and somebody comes across it, it gets sold, or somebody brings some information forward. And in this case, one of the three occurred. The only thing investigators had all those years is this composite sketch. A man and a woman, thought to have been in disguise when they stole it. Could that be Jerry and Rita Alter 32 years ago? Some say they see the similarities. This seems like an open and shut case, is it not? Nothing's ever open and shut. Uh, there's still a, a lot of tracking to do. Where has this been for the last 32 years? Did Jerry and Rita Alter lead double lives as art thieves? And working for school districts, how could they afford to travel the world, gone for weeks at a time? What we found digging into their past, and what we noticed in their bedroom where that painting was hung. New clues when discovering the de Kooning, a masterpiece mystery, returns. Jerry and Rita Alter lived the life that many of us only dream about. They visited 140 countries, all seven continents, documenting their adventures in more than 13,000 slides. A 
lifestyle that raises questions by itself after that stolen masterpiece was found hanging in their bedroom. How did they afford to travel so much on school teacher salaries? Well, I, I don't know. I, I guess, you know, we always figured they were very frugal. Jerry worked as a music teacher outside New York City, about the same time and just miles away from where de Kooning was painting Woman Ochre. But Jerry retired at age 48. He moved his family to southwest New Mexico, and that's when Rita decided to go to work as a speech teacher. Her nephew again, Ron Roseman. What did they like about New Mexico? Did they ever say? They liked, uh, they always said it was getting out of the rat race. That was their, <laughs> that was their phrase. Still, for a young retired music teacher and a newly hired speech teacher, the altars appeared to be quite comfortable financially. Well, they were traveling long before Rita retired. The couple had one of the nicest homes in Cliff. It was 20 acres on the edge of the mountains of the Gila National Forest. They built a pool, a rare luxury around here, and would take off for weeks at a time on adventures to some of the most remote parts of the planet, along with visits to the world's finest art museums. All of it on one teacher's salary yet they still had more than a million dollars in their bank accounts when they died. They were both very intelligent people, very intelligent people. The couple even kept a dated itinerary, where and when they traveled. And interestingly, the couple's own records show they were not overseas when the de Kooning was stolen in 1985. These were pieces that actually that Jerry Alter himself did. We know the Alters admired de Kooning's art because also found in their home were replicas of de Kooning's sketches, more clues mounting against the couple. This is where the painting was found, the master bedroom here down at the end of the hall after Mrs. Alter died. And this is where it hung for years, right behind her master bedroom door. You can still see the holes in the wall where the frame once hung. It was right there perhaps to hide it as much as to preserve it because the sun rises on this side of the house and sets on this side over here. And one thing we noticed in here, a blackout curtain covers this window. In the baseboard, we saw something else. A thick screw, the only one like it in the house, blocking the door from fully opening all the way and potentially damaging that painting. If Jerry and Rita Alter did not steal Woman Ochre, they knew what they had and tried to protect it so said Buck Burns, one of the owners of the consignment shop that unknowingly bought the painting. I, I'm sorry, you don't put a piece of art like that up and hang it behind your bedroom door. Do you think they bought it elsewhere? No, I don't personally. You think the altars were behind this? Yeah. Why? My personal thought, and it may be completely wrong, uh, but um, when I first saw where the painting was hanging in the house, it was for their private display. It wasn't for anybody else. It was hung behind that door, so when that door was open, nobody could see it. Santo, he's American Mustang. Donna Impero lives down the road. One of the few people to ever see Woman Ochre in Jerry and Rita's bedroom. I actually did a painting, them, uh, just a thank you present. I, I did a painting for them, because I'm an artist too. And I, um, I, I painted them on horses, and they were in the Himalaya, so they, they put it in the bedroom, and I came in to take a, a photo of it. So, and then when I turned to go out, I saw the painting. But Donna recalled that Rita did not want to discuss it. Well, I started talking about it, and um, they didn't talk too much about it, <laughs> so. Neighbors now uncertain whether they ever really knew the altars all of those years. How well do you ever really know someone? Uh, looking at it logically, I... Jerry was from New York. Jerry was highly educated. Uh, they were pretty sophisticated folks. However, they were very down to earth and really were acclimated to this community. The theory of them purchasing it at a garage sale or something, I kind of think goes out the window. That's my opinion. I just can't swallow it. <laughs> Folks cannot comprehend. Longtime neighbors could have kept such a secret. Stolen art without anyone knowing it. 
David and Margaret Strange have known the altar since the 1970s. It's really hard to think they were involved in it, you know, because they were such good people and friendly people, and, you know, they shared their life with, with you to an extent. But law enforcement has not hinted that anyone else might be involved. Are you disappointed you haven't put handcuffs on anyone for taking this? No, the more important thing is, is to get it back. Do you think you might put handcuffs on anyone? Don't know yet. Either the altars took it or they may have picked it up somewhere along their travels. As, I mean, those are the two theories that, that play out in my mind. Is there something else that might be out there you guys are considering? There could be, but of course we can't talk about it. You know, That's why I said there's a lot of missing pieces for 32 years, and it's a, a puzzle. We've got a part of the puzzle now, a big part of it. Now we've got to put in some other, other uh, parts. Uh, that's where talking to folks and and trying to retrace 32 years is going to pay uh, uh, a lot of information for us. Before he died, Jerry left one final clue. In plain sight, it is perhaps the most startling of all. And giving Woman Ochre back to the museum wasn't going to be as easy as anyone expected. The conclusion of discovering the de Kooning, a WFAA original documentary, in just a moment. The deeper you dig, the more evidence that stacks up against Jerry and Rita Alter. After their deaths, a stolen painting valued at $160 million was found hanging behind their bedroom door. Woman Ochre, as the work is known, was taken from the University of Arizona Museum of Art back in 1985. But the man and woman who stole it were never caught. The getaway car, quite similar to a vehicle the Alters owned. We know that Jerry and Rita had a fascination with the artist, Willem de Kooning. And even if they didn't steal the masterpiece, the Alters went to great lengths to protect what they had and hide it. This is the cultural patrimony of, of America. Um, Willem de Kooning rocked the art world. And um, even though he was originally born in the Netherlands, you know, he, his career took place in the United States. But perhaps the most startling clue was left in plain sight. A book of short stories that Jerry wrote in 2011. In it, a fictional account about a couple who steals a 120 carat jewel from a museum, distracting the guard and then fleeing in a getaway truck, stealing the jewel and hanging it behind a secret wall in their home for their own viewing pleasure details strikingly similar to what happened in the art heist. When word got out in Silver City that a priceless painting ended up at an antique store after an estate sale, some people saw dollar signs. As we were getting phone calls from attorneys who were trying to get us to keep the painting and not turn it back over to the museum. Well, by the time I'd gotten a third phone call from this attorney saying, telling me what we were going to do, and this wasn't even my attorney, um, <clears throat> I finally called Olivia and I left her a frantic message. I was just so unbelievably humbled that, that they just, they wanted to give the painting back and they wanted it where it belonged and they didn't want, they, they wanted to, it to come back as easily and quickly as possible. The owners of the antique store secretly moved that painting to a private home nearby. And within hours, police quietly staged outside. As Olivia and her team from the museum stepped inside. I will never forget that moment as long as I live. We were greeted with hugs and people are taking pictures and, and they're filming and, and they just can't wait to see what our reaction is to the painting. In a back room, propped up against a wall, there it was. A painting that no one working at the museum today had ever seen in person. <laughs> 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 
It was like seeing a ghost of something in a way because I've only known this painting from photographs and seeing it in person there were certain elements of it that were really familiar and certain elements that you can only discover by looking at the original work of art. <laughs> I just, it could have, it could have fallen into the hands of anybody, you know what I mean? Under armed guard, the museum drove its masterpiece back to Tucson, where it was first authenticated. The way this the, a little thing of note is these staples, the, it, it seems pretty amateur. The canvas compared to what was cut out of the frame in 1985. The, the two pieces are very consistent with each other. And it was a perfect match. I mean, are there any doubts in the room? <laughs> The museum is now searching for someone to meticulously conserve it before Woman Ochre ever returns to a gallery. The family doesn't talk about it. It was a big shock that the painting was there in the first place, and we just can't imagine, you know, what the details were. Even after all the evidence against his aunt and uncle, Ron Roseman says it's hard to believe they would risk everything to steal a painting. Still though, he wonders about his uncle Jerry. It's a plausible scenario to me that he was um, smart enough to not only mastermind the painting theft and get away with it, but also clever enough to confess to it in his book and still get away with it. With Jerry and Rita Alter now deceased, most questions about why they had a stolen painting, they will likely remain unanswered. One thing is certain though, they got away with it.